Welcome to Spirit Alive. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join us today. We have a wonderful program for you, and uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away. people even now, new covenant people, new believers or believers in the church, get healed by some method and find themselves sick again with the same disease that they had and maybe even become even worse than they were before. So how can one get healing and stay well for the rest of their lives? The number one way to get healed is to, to, is to um, know for yourself that healing belongs to you. And to base your healing and your questions on what the Bible says about healing, not on experiences. Because people say, well, you know, I look at brother so-and-so, you know, he didn't get healed. Um, or, you know, I know that Christian missionary, you know, lived for Jesus. And uh, they never got healed. Or I know that wife of a pastor, and, and she, they prayed for her, and she died. But you can't base your healing or the subject of healing, you can't base it on, you know, uh, someone else's experience, what they didn't have or what they had. I know myself, uh, my mother died of cancer, and I was not in the ministry then. I was, a, you know, um, born-again Christian, but I had very limited knowledge on, on healing. But I knew God healed. And I knew that healing was available because some, some people got healed. But I didn't know that healing was available to everyone. And so the controversy is, is that people, they don't know whether healing is available to, for everybody. So they think that healing is only something that, you know, God might do as a side issue. And so religiously, people think that healing, you know, uh, of the physical body is, is really not that important as maybe a Sabbath day, as we see in the, in, in the, uh, the four Gospels. There's a lot of... Uh, discussion on it, and they were questioning Jesus why he healed on the Sabbath day, or questioning people why they came to get healed on the Sabbath day. And they put that aside and said, well, come on another day. So they thought one day was more important than someone else's healing who was suffering. But Jesus went ahead and healed them on the Sabbath day. Anyway, just to prove to them that this is important. And I think healing is very important. Just before I came here, an hour before I came here, Someone called me, uh, you know, um, uh, from another town. Someone is uh, deathly ill at the ICU, and uh, they thought possibly that I could go there. They want to send me there because I know everything about healing, and <laughs> you know, or, or you know, I just happen to be uh, anointed, or you know, I appreciate people's confidence in me, but I'm not everybody's pastor, and I, I'm not everybody's. Um, you know, uh, answer to, to certain things, you know. And um, it's like, uh, you know, if you're a police officer, you might be a police officer for a certain period of time in a certain place, but you're not a police officer everywhere. You can't be uh, stopping traffic every city you go to and running after robbers and, and, and trying to do different things. So you have dur certain jurisdiction, and so you have to stay within your realm. Otherwise, you'd be working around the clock. And so sometimes people call me, they think it's a good idea to call me and send me somewhere where I'm not wanted because they're already having controversy on it, so they want to send me there. So I've had those issues happen to me. Sometimes I was very, very uh, open to go running somewhere because, you know, after all, they need healing. And um, I know some things about healing. I pray for the sick. And when I get there, they say, what do you want? They say, well, um, so-and-so sent me here to pray for this person. They said, we don't want you here. Uh, we never called for you. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you get a little bit of gun shy after. And so you don't always run somewhere right away because no one, because uh, sometimes they have um, controversy in the family. And so it's better if that person themselves requests for you or wants you to come or they want healing themselves or they want you go and find a minister. 
and bring them to me if they're available. And, and so, uh, because sometimes people's not available all the time. You know, Jesus healed. We talked about this last night in Bible school. Uh, you know, there's 19 cases of healing in the Bible. In the four Gospels, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and each one wrote about healing. And John wrote some, some of them on healing that the other ones never mentioned. But most of them wrote about the same kinds of healing. And so there, there was, you, can, you can look at them. So there's 19 cases of healing in the, in the Bible. There are, there are there for case study so that we can look at them and ask ourselves questions or we want to, they answer actually uh, uh, for us, they're answering for us about what we might have about, about healing ourselves. And uh, Jesus is the healer. And when he walked uh, this world, when he came here, he uh, ministered healing. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, and verse 38, uh, the um, preacher is, is, is uh, preaching there. I believe it's Peter uh, is preaching, and Luke is writing the book of Acts. And he said, how God anointed Jesus. Everybody said anointed. So you can be anointed to heal. Like in 1950, Brother Hagin says, Jesus appeared to him, said, kneel down before me, stretch out both of your hands. And he pointed his finger on both of his palms of his hands. He said, I, I'm going to give you a special anointing to minister to the sick. And tell people who you saw me, and tell people that I have anointed you. And if they would believe that, they'll be healed. They receive that healing. And so he was, uh, uh, the transfer of anointing happened at that particular time. A visitation by Jesus and ministered to them. And you see that in, in the ninth chapter of the book of, uh, I believe it's the book of Luke, in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke. You see, in the ninth chapter, I believe they sent out, Jesus sent out 12 people. And uh, in fact, uh, um, you know, they went out and, and ministered. They were excited about, about what happened to them. Then in the next chapter, Jesus sent out 70 more people to minister to the sick. And so he transferred the healing anointing to these people to go minister to the sick. And there was one incident in there, in those things, that uh, one guy wasn't a part of that group, but he heard about it. And so he went ahead and ministered healing. And Jesus didn't directly tell him to do it, but he did exactly what he heard other people do, heal the sick. And he ministered healing, and he got people well. And the apostle said, should we stop him? Because he's not part of our group. Jesus said, don't stop him. And so you can, you can take principles, spiritual laws that are, that, are, that are there and use the same laws of the spirit that, that are put there by God and go ahead and minister healing. Jesus ministered healing by, by the anointing. And if you hang around with certain people, you'll, you'll get anointed too because that anointing will come upon you through association. Amen? If you're wrong with certain people, you, know, you associate with them. It's like anything else. If you hang around certain people, you'll start to talk like them. For instance, if I go to my reservation, I'll hang around there for a long time or a few, a few days. Then I'll start talking the same way. I'll, I'll, I'll have the same kind of pronunciations, and I'll, and I'll be using different kind of uh, ways of talking. And my wife will say, you've been around with those boys? I said, yeah. And she said, I know because you, you, you act like it again. So, so you, I put on certain things. Say, for instance, one time I was driving down the road, you know, and uh, I stopped by, it used to be Tim, not Tim Hortons, uh, um, uh, Robin's Donuts on Cumberland Street. And I'm rushing to work, and I was going to go get, I ran right inside there. There's no driving, so I walked right in there. And, and at that time, that years ago, the people, everybody's smoking in there. So I walked into the, into the place, and and people were smoking, and I ordered my coffee. I said, you know, make it quick. And, and so I was doing it for a few minutes, and so they gave me my coffee. I said, I'm going to order some donuts, and I ordered a donut quickly just to go back, get to, get to work on time over on Cumberland Street. So I jumped back in my car, and I noticed uh, the, the donut uh, tastes and smelled like nicotine. It got all over that nicotine that nicotine-tasting donut. 
And, uh, and so, and I noticed that my clothes started to smell. And it got all over me. How many people know that things can rub off on you? Like the anointing, it'll rub off on you. If you're on a certain place, and if someone's anointed, that'll, that'll get you excited, and it'll come on you too. Last night, I was teaching on the anointing. I was teaching about the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus walked by. Of course, in John chapter 5, there was a man, there's a pool. It talked about the pool of Bethesda, and there was a lot of sick people there. And they were put there, and apparently, uh, tradition says there was, a, there was a shed there, and, and everybody that was sick uh, came there because the scripture says God sent an angel at a certain season. They didn't know when that season was. It could be Wednesday. It could be Thursday once in a while. It could be first of the month. It could be last of the month. It could be middle of the month. It could be 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock at night. But they didn't know exactly when it was. So an angel went there and troubled the water. When they see that troubling the water, the first one went in, was healed no matter what he had. So this is found in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. If you study it, it's in there. And so if you, if you look at that chapter, you find that God began to demonstrate, everybody said demonstrate. God began to demonstrate his power without using a man. God used an angel. So he didn't send anoint someone. He didn't send somebody by that pool to preach five lessons on how to be healed. He didn't teach anybody on a series on the anointing. God just sent an angel there. And someone asked, why did God send an angel and, and why did he do that? Because God will always wants to come into our realm. Somehow he'll do something special. Everybody say special. Now specials don't happen every, every, every day. If you go there and ask for something, they got a special thing on meat on a certain time. You go to a, host, uh, uh, you know, a, a place where they sell meat or whatever, and you went there. When you come back next day, you want to order the same meat, but it's not there anymore because the special happened yesterday. So you miss out on that. So, so specials happens only a certain time. And so uh, God doesn't always put on specials like that. It doesn't happen all the time. So, so here's what happened. In that chapter, God sent that angel, stirred up the water, people got excited, one guy got in and got healed. And so what was God doing? Well, why did God send an angel there? Well, God, he's sovereign, he can send an angel if he wants to. He don't, doesn't have to ask you if he could send an angel there. He just sent that angel. No church was praying, nobody was asking God to do anything. He just sent that angel in there to stir up that water. It was bubbling up or something. So the first one went in, he, was, uh, he or she was made well. Thank you for watching Spirit Alive again. Um, we enjoy uh, receiving messages from people and uh, we're encouraged here at Spirit Alive Television in Thunder Bay, Ontario. When you call, uh, we share your message and we pray for you regularly uh, at, the, at the station and uh, at our location here in Thunder Bay. And so we have prayer partners not only during the program, but throughout the week. And uh, we pray for you on a regular basis, sometimes every day. And so we thank God for you. So hang around, we're gonna pray with you at the end of the program. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and friends. Most of us desire change in some area of our life. We try hard to make those changes happen, but only too soon we find ourselves falling back into the same old habits and behaviors. So how can we ensure real change? We can experience true transformation in our lives from the Word of God. God's Word is like a seed, and your heart is the soil it's planted in. When the seed is planted and nurtured, it begins to grow, then produce the fruit in your life that you desire. If you want lasting change, this book is for you, Effortless Change by Andrew Womack. It'll lead you into a journey of transformation. Your life will never be the same. You can receive your copy of Effortless Change by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. 
When you request your book, please include your name and full mailing address. Just mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. It's viewers like you that help us keep sharing the spirit of faith across Canada. Make which. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Blake Hagberg. My name is Amanda. My name is Daytona. My name is Bronson. I'm a third year Bible college student. Yeah, Bible college is awesome. Uh, God doesn't always put on specials like that. It doesn't happen all the time. So, so here's what happened in that chapter. God sent that angel, stirred up the water. People got excited. One guy got in and got healed. And so what was God doing? Well, why did God send an angel there? Well, God, his sovereign, he can send an angel if he wants to. He don't, doesn't have to ask you if he could send an angel there. He just sent that angel. No church was praying. Nobody was asking God to do anything. He just sent that angel in there to stir up that water. It was bubbling up or something. So the first one went in. He, was, uh, he or she was made well. And so there was very many sick people, and some people could not move themselves. They were crippled. Some were blind. Some were so crippled they couldn't move. And so, so God, you know, in his sovereign See, he went there and he sent that angel. And so what's God doing? Well, he's trying to get people's attention to get their, stir their faith up so that they could believe and, and start praying and crying out to God. And so in churches, people are asking and waiting for some angel to appear to them perhaps, and they might get healed. But how many people know that God will probably not send an angel to you? So if you're sick, and if you got a lingering disease that could kill you in five years, and if, you, if that angel didn't come in five years, you're going to die in five years. But if you're critical, you only got five days or five hours, you better have something else, or you are going to go that time very quickly. Sometimes, you know, Brother Hagin used to say, if someone has lingering disease, some kind of a disease where, you know, it's not going to kill you right then, you have time to minister to someone. Give them the word. Teach them. Teach them about the covenant that it belongs to them. And they can minister and, and receive ministry for themselves. And so um, in, in that same chapter, chapter 5, the book of John, starting from verse 5, the Bible says that Jesus, you know, um, uh, he, was, he came by there and he noticed a man who had had a spirit of, uh, infirmity for 38 years. 38 years. A man been there for 38 years, an invalid, couldn't move, was primarily dependent on everybody to uh, move them or transfer them or do whatever. Jesus came up to him and asked that man who was there for, you know, many, many years. I mean, he probably was came in and out of there, and he asked him, do you want to be made well? Of course, the man uh, would say, yeah, I want to be made well. Uh, what do you think, you know? I've been here for a long time. You know, wouldn't it be, you know, you think about it, here's Jesus uh, looking at a man who's, he, he's sick. He's, he can't move. But Jesus asked the person, if he wants to be made well. And so, you know, you, you know, why would you ask someone that? Because, first of all, he's there. That means he wants to be made well. And Jesus talked to him to, to initiate some kind of discussion to hear him speak or initiate some kind of a willingness to want to reach out to Jesus. And so if we're going to re receive healing or learn about healing, we've got to figure out how Jesus did it. And how he ministered to those people. And so one way he ministered is through the anointing. He was anointed. In fact, Jesus said that he was anointed in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. He got up at a press conference. And I like to say that because it's kind of like, you know, uh, he did. 
and he wrote, he read the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah 61, I believe it is, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to heal. And, uh, and he began to say some things, read that, and they just, wow, this, wow, this is wonderful. And um, they said there, uh, you know, he said, today, this is fulfilled in your ears. And everybody got excited. And some of them didn't get too excited about the fact that he, you know, they said, well, this can't be, this man is from our town. We know him. We know Jesus. He grew up here. Uh, we know his family, his mom and dad. We know his uh, brothers and sisters. Of course, you know, when I was a Catholic, I thought that Jesus didn't have any brothers and sisters. I was astounded that he had brothers and sisters, that Mary had other children. I didn't know that. How many of you didn't know that? How many of you didn't know that? Yeah? Of course, every, you, every one of you are so smart, you figured it out all by yourself. Uh, you know, well, anyway, uh, they said, who does he think he is? They were offended of him. But he said, I'm anointed. So one thing about the anointing, ministering the healing anointing, you have to know, first of all, that you have the anointing. Either just Jesus has to show you, shows up and tell you like he did in the ninth chapter, in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke, and Matthew, the same thing. I believe it's Matthew 10, where he sends them out. He said, I, I'm going to give you a healing anointing. Over in the New Testament, you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll find verse 28, 29, you'll find that there's a list of ministries. Everybody say ministry. There's a list of ministries. It talks about the five-fold office. We would call the five-fold office. But he also called people who were work miracles and, and people who work healing, who have full-time job healing the sick. That's their job. And God gave, gave them that and sent them out. You know, something like you would think about Benny Hinn. There's many people like that. God is still calling people to, to be anointed to heal the sick. Either uh, for a period of time or for full time. So the second way that Jesus ministered is through teaching. In other words, we can say it this way. Through faith. Primarily, faith in the word of God. Teach them that uh, healing belongs to them. Or teach them that if I lay hands on you, healing can be transferred to you through the laying on of hands. Well, laying on of hands is the point of contact. It's the time when someone lays hands on you. If he's a, anointed, that power will go into you and drive out the sickness. And you, in effect, the healing and a cure in your body. Or you can do it just by faith, without any special anointing, without being called to the ministry. We can just lay hands on the sick and believe that laying on the hands is a point of contact where we release our faith together and say, Amen, I receive it. And that's, that's, that's how we can receive our healing. I was listening to Brother Hagin. You know, Jesus appeared to him. And he said, I'm going to give you a special healing anointing to minister to the sick. And he said, in, in my services today, he said, most people are not healed by a spectacular move of God of healing. It was just mainly through teaching the word. In healing school, people who were, who were uh, uh, you know, I don't know what that word is, uh, sentenced to die. What is that word? People who are going to die. Terminal. People are terminal. That's the word I want to use. It's kind of fancy word. I'm terminal. It's very terminal. But anyway, uh, people who were sick came to healing school or just sat in the meeting, and he just taught. Uh, nothing, they didn't feel anything. They didn't, uh, nothing happened. Nobody fell over on their faces. Nobody jumped up and said, Woo, ha, hallelujah, I'm healed. And they were just healed, sitting there with the healing anointing. He said the most astounding miracles happened just sitting under the, under the word. Brother Hagin is teaching on healing. Let's go there. Just hearing the word. Everybody say the word. See, the word will heal you. Thank you so much for watching the program. We want to pray with you. Uh, whatever need you have, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all our partners and friends and those that are viewing wherever they are. We pray that God will give direction to those that are seeking 
whatever um, decisions they're making right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, by your Holy Spirit that you're going to, we believe you're leading them right now. You said that you'd lead your people. You said, my sheep knows my voice and they follow me. And you said that you'd lead by the inner witness. We thank you on the inside of them. They'll know exactly what to do. You said, by your Holy Spirit, you will do that. So, Father, right now, we pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of his calling. We pray in the name of Jesus that you'd give wisdom to everyone seeking wisdom and direction for their lives. We pray for their families, their homes to be secure from all the onslaught of the enemy. We pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We thank you that healing and health will be granted to those that are asking for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for you are working marvelously and wonderfully in their lives. We thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for them, what you paid for them, and what they're able to receive right now. Healing and health and direction for every single person. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been away from Jesus Christ, you can just ask him again to say, Lord God, forgive me. You don't have to get saved again. All you have to do is renew your fellowship with God. You know, you don't get unsaved when you fall into some kind of sin. You don't get unsaved. You just get out of fellowship. You ask God to forgive you. The Bible says if, if you have sinned, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9 and 7, when we sin, we confess it to God. He'll forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and we'll have fellowship, renewed fellowship with God again. So do that right now. Say, God, forgive me of my error of walking away, my sin. Forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for cleansing me with your blood. And if you've never been born again, all you have to do today is be willing to turn away from your sin and uh, walk with Jesus, walk with God. The Bible says if we repent, that means to change your mind wherever direction you're in right now, wherever you're going that's wrong, you know yourself what it is and turn to God and say, God, please help me. The Bible said he will not only come to you, he'll give you the willingness to make the changes and he'll also empower you, the Bible says. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, that he will do that for you. So I believe that everything that you're concerned about, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 138, and I believe it's verse 9, he says that God will, will, will perfect that which concerns you, everything that you're concerned about. He will change that. He will help you make those changes and help you whatever burdens you have. So do that today, right now, and he will help you. If you've not been born again, say, Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says that you will be brand new on the inside. And uh, the work of faith is going to be executed and done by you and God working together. And there'll be a massive change in your life for the good. Good things have been planned for you by God. So we'll see you again next week. God bless you.